Hello, hello. Oh my gosh. I am so late. I am so sorry for that, guys. Oh my goodness. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everyone. I was having some computer issues driving me crazy. Goodness gracious. It's not one thing, it's another, right? <laughs> Okay, awesome. Thanks, babe. All right, so we're just giving like everybody um like two or three more minutes to join. Um, let me turn my TV off. Duh. Hold on one second. <laughs> Okie dokie. Ah, oh, hi, babe. Hey, Dom. How are you, girl? Hello everybody, hi, thank you for joining me. I'm running a little behind because we were having computer issues and um, for some reason my computer did not want to let me go live and I guess that's why they told me to um, try to go live like what they said, like a, well try to fix my audio and all that and test it about um, about 30 minutes before your live just to test to make sure that everything is clear and good um, but I'm glad you're here to join me Dom thank you thank you thank you oh thank you <laughs> I tried um, I tried I curled my hair um, with like these little curlers and it kind of was a it, it wasn't that bad um, but almost broke the hook because it's like those curler things that you like crochet it through the um like the little tube thing and so I just was like pulling and tugging on my hair girl I almost ripped my hair out <laughs> trying to um freaking weave my hair through the the dang tube okay but yes thank you I was trying to go for like a short um cutesy curly look because my hair is has been extremely dry lately and with natural hair you know you tend to like run out of things to do with it so yeah I just decided to go ahead and try to curl it <laughs> so thank you thank you thank you um but yes yeah, so oh hi hi March welcome welcome thank you for joining thank you for being here um, I was going to play music in the beginning of the live, but I think with all the copywriting issues that is going on, I'm going to just leave it alone, leave the music alone until I, you know, I'm able to play around with it a little bit more and um, see like what is it, like what is it about because, and what can I use because not all songs I can use. So, um, that being said... It is now time to start. Um, anybody who joins us can, you know, uh, I can try to catch them up at the end or whatnot. But this is, um, we're just going to get started. Okay. Ah, my phone ain't charging. Why is my phone charging? I need my phone to charge. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Sorry guys, it has been a crazy morning. A crazy morning. Okay, there we go. My phone's charging now. So I um I wanted to, this is completely not scripted or you know planned out. I wanted it is planned out, but not as planned out um as most people might have it be. Um oh, okay. But um so I pretty much made bulletins to of questions to answer for you guys, talk to you guys about, and um, also get to know you as well. Um, that's exactly what this is, just getting to know each other, me introducing myself to you and introducing Variety Views to you guys, and um, just being able to like grow as a community, you know? So yeah, so starting off, um, welcome, like I said, for joining. You're here, that is that means a lot to me because um, I just for some reason struggle with um, finding support. And when I say support, I mean like sharing things of mine um, 
you know, I have a YouTube page and it's very hard, number one, to be a black woman and, and advertising yourself, uh, especially when you had to deal with all your life being told that, you know, brown skinned women are not desirable and or that this hairstyle or my kind of hair is unprofessional and all those kind of things that I've heard before personally. Um, you know, it's very hard for me to get myself out there. So I struggle with having people support me and doing that for me. So you guys being here is super awesome and shows that you guys truly do support me and um, just want to grow with me and see how how I, how much I blow up. <laughs> Let's see how, how much I blow up, guys. Um, so, yes, okay. Sorry, I did want to get something I wanted to show everybody. Okay. <laughs> uh, next live, I'll be way, way more um, organized. <laughs> it's been, like I said, it's been a very crazy, very crazy morning. Um, so, yeah, so, I, like I said, I wanted to mention my other platforms that I am on, uh, some of them that I have here, and that would be Twitch. I am on Twitch, which is like a, um, gaming type of website where you can, uh, game or even, like, pretty much cook or talk or sing, paint, you can do whatever you want, uh, and get, you know, fans, and if you get enough fans, then you can also really get paid um, by your fans for your content. So you just stream live and you play or talk or do anything that you want pretty much, right? But that's that's where you can follow me, D-E-Y-A, V underscore V for Twitch. And then, of course, on YouTube, I am Variety Views with a Z right here. Ah, it's right here. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, and it's also our my website because I just created a website as well where you can actually get to all of my social medias and all of um, pretty much all of my content. So that's that. And I also am on TikTok, and this is a long name. I might change it. I don't know. You guys let me know. But it's it's Daya Darelis. D e y a d a r e a l e s t. But yeah. That one's kind of long, so I'll keep that up for a second. But on TikTok, um, I'm trying to get big on there too. That is another platform, like I said, that's super hard for, apparently super hard for women who look like me um, to get, you know, um, seen or heard. You know, the algorithm um, on there is if you're liked or seen more and people comment more on your stuff, you get suggested. And I'm just not getting that. And a lot of black women have been freaking kicked off of TikTok for speaking their minds. Um, and it, you know, categorized as bullying. And then you have, um, you know, other TikTokers who are not, you know, of are not people of color who are able to say racist and pedophilia type of things and they don't get kicked off. So it's just really hard, guys. Like, please get me out there because, like I said, it's already hard enough for me to even be anybody's desire to, to look at, talk to, or anything like that. So please get me out there. Help me. <laughs> so um, so that's that. And, um, oh, no. Sorry, guys. Do, 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 do. I have a list. Um, so... This is my absolutely 100% first, first, first live, uh, paid live event. Um, the events in the past that I have put on to Facebook have not been live. They, I mean, have not been paid. They have just been me getting on and trying to build a community, build people who want to listen to me and talk to me and grow as well. So, um... This is, yeah, I'm getting paid <laughs> by people who are going to show up. Uh, so far, my biggest fan, my fiance, paid for a ticket, and that's awesome. I get a dollar out of this. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get more. Um, but, you know, it's just really, I'm just excited to be here just to be able to talk and, um, you know, you know, get things out there. Um, okay, and so... Uh, Sorry. Do, 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 do. Uh, I also am. I want to also mention on the Twitch platform. 
I am soon, hopefully, going to be affiliated with them as well. Um, because I've just been getting on their gaming and getting a bunch of, getting go on their gaming and getting a bunch of, um, like followers and support. And so hopefully soon that'll be another avenue for me or revenue for me to get money and, you know, and do things that I enjoy at the same time. So that is going to be super awesome. And uh, YouTube, I'm trying to get that thousand subscribers, okay, <laughs> and that 4,000 watch hour time and by doing that like I said I just got to get out there and right now I'm at 87 it has grown in the past few days which is good news for me as well but I don't know guys <laughs> well anyway oop, I'm knocking stuff over um so anyways today we are going to be um talking about mental health and pretty much like the tools that I you know use to get through them um, I'm going to introduce myself and like, you know, background of my history career wise and um, also be introducing variety views and um, talking about mental health and, you know, what it does, like what it what it means to me and, you know, what does it mean to other like what's the definition, um, you know, tools that tools that I've used, you know, healthy and unhealthy to get through the things that I've been through in my life and my mental illnesses. Um, and also, um, I want to make sure you guys know ways of like doing self, self love and self care, because that's extremely important. Um, I will be, we'll talk about memes that have to do with mental health and kind of just like discuss them. And we'll do a question, like a Q and A, where you get to answer. Ask, ah, I can't talk. Ask me questions, and I'll be able to answer them. Anything you'd like to know, I am not holding any um, thing. You know, I'm not holding anything back. I'm 100% honest and open. And yeah, that's about it, pretty much. We're just gonna be talking. Um. And having fun with each other today. Also, my event said that it's till three, but that it's not going to be that long. I promise it is not. I don't even know why I did that. It wouldn't let me change it, or I just have to play around with it more to figure out. But definitely not till three o'clock. <laughs> um. Okay, so a little bit about myself. My name is Sadea. Okay, I am twenty-eight years old. I have three children that are here on this earth. And I have one that did not make it. Um, I had a miscarriage. And um, at four, I was four months pregnant. And, um, but yeah, I have three kids that are here on this earth. And, you know, I have my, I'm a certified medical assistant. Um, what else? I, I, okay, starting from a child, I used to write music um, from the age of, five years old. I've been singing since I was like one and a half, two years old. Uh, I used to write music. I used to be in talent shows with Dominique actually <laughs> in the in the here in the live right now. Um, me and Dominique and a couple of my other friends used to do talent shows, um, drama club. I, I remember I used to go to New York with my mom and my grandmother and we used to go to like um, like these like markets right and they would have block parties and I would get on stage when while they were having block parties and just singing acapella at like 11 12 13 years old with no fear right um, I just was like all into I was all into following my dreams at that point and then you know um, I ended up you know getting pregnant early because I started having sex at 14 and so I got pregnant at 16 and I had my oldest daughter at 17. So that was crazy. <laughs> and, um, but while I was pregnant with her, I was also able to stay in high school, like actual high school. I did not drop out. I did not go to a pregnant, um, like school that everybody was like trying to make me go to. Right. And, um, so I just, yeah, I did not, I did not do that at all. I stayed in high school. I also, while I was in high school, um, I also went to medical assisting school. That's how I became a medical assistant, certified. Pretty much, I would go half, um, starting junior year, I was able to go half and half. So I went half regular high school, half 
um, this, you know, trade school, which had a program for CMAs. And I was able to go and do that at 16 years old and know that I was going to graduate um, high school and medical assistant school with my baby, okay, with a newborn. And I was, I was right. I did that. I, you know, I had a lot of haters and people tell me, you're not going to do this. Like even my own mother, you know, um, had doubts. She did because I was naturally not a very um, studious child. Like it was all boring to me because I already knew the stuff. Like it's like I paid attention to it, but it's like I, I was just naturally a child that liked to find out more. So when they would give lessons, I would find out more about that. I wouldn't just stay at that lesson. And then the problem with that is, you know, the teacher's teaching the lesson and I already know about it and I'm just like sitting there, right? And or getting in trouble and talking to my fellow students and this and that and this and that. And so that's pretty much, um, <laughs> that's pretty much just been me. I've always, I, like my, my mom thought I was not going to, she did not think I could do it. And, but I proved her and everybody wrong. I went, I finished high school, um, and I also finished medical assistant school with straight A's at a 3.5 average. So, yes. <laughs> uh, which means I got straight A's, okay? I had straight A's and I kept those A's because I wanted to not only prove everybody wrong, but make sure I shut them the fuck up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to shut everybody up because, um, no, you know, it's not okay to doubt people when you don't even know what they're capable of and so I did that and then you know I was not successful with get it becoming a uh, medical assistant right away I went through the problem of oh you graduated school now but you don't have um, experience and it's like okay well how can I gain experience if you don't give me experience so I fell back off of that for a while and did retail and then, um, you know, I got pregnant again, you know, I've, I've had like, I just, I've been going through life, you know, and, um, you know, I had my problems, I was going through the abuse, and I pretty much just left that situation, but it was crazy. And um, I pretty much got back into the medical field when I came back to Colorado, because I started, I mean, came back to Colorado, when I came to Colorado, I started getting more back into the medical field, started working in nursing homes again, and also starting to work with like people with special needs. Um, and I, I grew so close to that community that like we talk all the, like my clients and I talk all the time. Um, we grow with each other and they I made a painting for them in honor of cerebral palsy right here so you know like it's just like it's a very good field to be in um but now with COVID and everything happening it's also a scary field to be in but I did it I, I stuck to it right and um so now you know I'm in my own place you know I went through homelessness on and off on and off on and off until I finally became stable enough to get my own place and not deal with that so that's pretty much a little bit of a history of me um, I love to sing I love to dance I love to um, do arts and crafts I love to do a pretty much pretty much a little bit of everything oh message you message you later about that I'm sorry I totally I need to scroll my thing as it's I didn't see that message Dom I'm sorry um, oh, I love you too, honey. Love you, love you, love you. <laughs> um, I will message you later, Dom. Yes, I will definitely do that. I might forget what it's about, but I will definitely message you. <laughs> I'm like, hey, remind me what I was supposed to. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I like to do arts and crafts. I like to vlog. Um, I don't necessarily like to edit after the vlog is done, but you know, after I'm recording, but it's, it's, it, it has its rewards. I do get my stories from people like, um, that I don't know at all. That'll be like, wow, you helped me through this situation or, you know, you, oh, okay. Yes. Yes. I will do that. I'll even send you pictures too, because I have some pictures. Um, and your hair would look so cute like that too. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so, um, 
<laughs> yes, um, that's pretty much all about me, right? Right? Like, I'm just, I'm really not, I'm not as awesome. No, I'm kidding. I am awesome. I just, I just, I haven't done a lot in my life because I had kids and I literally fell behind that. Like, I, I fell behind the excuse that I have kids. I'm married. I need to just sit down, and that's not, not okay. Not okay. So, uh, introducing Variety Views and how we became Variety Views, right? So, I always, like I said, wanted to, I mean, even as a kid, before YouTube, I always wanted to get on a camera and talk or do something. Like, that is just who I am. The camera is my friend. And I guess, I don't know if that's because I'm a Leo or if I'm just like super egotistical or um, I just... I just really like being in front of the camera, you know? And um, I just, I've always wanted to do something like blog, right? Or blog even. And so I, um, I, I started a YouTube page, I want to say two, three years ago. It was like three years ago where I did makeup and natural hair tips. And I only, I still only have like 10 subscribers on that YouTube, which I have to get rid of. But, um, you know, it wasn't going anywhere, and I didn't really know the analytics and stuff behind it, so I just was, like, posting whatever, like, any kind of makeup or any kind of um, hair, you know, tutorials. But the follower, I didn't know about the 1,000 followers, I didn't know about the 4,000 watch time hours, and so it was just like, ugh, it was getting to me. But that YouTube page... Um, just was that right and I, it just kind of died and I like I said I moved here to Colorado and I didn't really have anybody who supported my idea of having a YouTube channel or even having any kind of platform where I talk to people and grow with them and like as a community um, and also just being a social media influencer like that's always what I've wanted to do absolutely always wanted to do I never run out of ideas I will never run out of ideas and I'm just super like fun and cool and I love people and I can't hug everybody so this is the best way to do it right <laughs> online and um, so then I met I met my now fiance Zach and you know he was kind of talking to me about about how he wanted to do a show um, and how, you know, he told me the name, I won't say it, but he told me the name of his show that he wanted to do and always wanted to do. And I was just like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And, you know, I was like, well, I have a YouTube channel and I never really went anywhere with it. Like, it never, like, jumped off. And then we kind of looked at each other like, wait a minute, like, you wanted to do a show. I wanted to just blog, but maybe we could, maybe we can put the two together, right? And that's ultimately what happened. He um, he started talking, showing me analytics and you know all of the algorithms on these different platforms. And so I was just like, oh my gosh! And then once I started to make content and actually see how it was like flying off, um, and you know how everybody was just watching me and actually like paying attention to my stuff. I was just like, oh my god, I'm not ugly. <laughs> like, oh my god, people do like me. Um, or, oh my god, my voice isn't annoying, because that's another thing I, I struggle with, is thinking that my voice sounds terrible when I talk, okay? And so, it was just, it feels good. It feels really good to be able to take something that someone else wanted, and something that I wanted, and make it something bigger than the both, right? Because that's exactly what this is going to be it's not just one thing and you know I have people telling me oh you know you're a variety streamer or you're a variety you know channel type of thing like that's gonna be all over the place you know you're gonna not like obtain a good audience and this and blah 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 blah. and I'm just like okay first of all you can't tell me what's gonna work for me or not just because it didn't work for you don't mean it's not gonna work for me so um that's essentially why we made it a variety show because he's interested in things, I'm interested in things, and we're two people together that came up with this big dream, this big idea to not only help us get out there and become famous, but help other people um, be happy and love themselves and be cheerful and just be happy to be alive and be on this planet because we don't have a lot of that 
and um, I just feel like people forget about people with mental illnesses and even people in general people who don't have mental illnesses they just people forget about each other and I want my channel and I want my platforms to be a safe haven for us to all be able to talk to each other and connect and not forget about each other you know so that is essentially what Variety Views is. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. <laughs> so yeah, um, like I said, so today's topic is mental health. Also, welcome to anybody who just joined. Um, today's topic is mental health. And so, um, oops, sorry. One second. Definition. of mental health is definition of mental health is a person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being right definition of mental illness um so it could be mental disorders that you struggle with and that can range from clinical depression, anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, dementia, attention de deficit, hyper hyperactivity disorder, or AD, ADD or ADHD, um, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, autism, and post-traumatic stress disorder, okay? So there are a lot of things on that list, right? That people may not even have known or thought that was in a different category, but no, these are all mental illnesses. And in a second, I'll be able to tell you and go down the line of all those illnesses of which ones I have, because I have quite a few. Um, and yeah, and I'll also be asking you guys, like if you, are, if you feel comfortable in the comment box to type if you guys have any mental illnesses and what you struggle with. And we could talk about that in a little bit. But um, so mental health, Definitely is important um, because if you do not, if your health is not up to par, you are not going to do well. And well, if you're functioning, if you have mental illnesses and you're able to function, that's okay, but it's not okay because you're functioning with something that you're also putting to the side. Um, especially when you don't get treatment for it, right? And that's literally what I am. I'm a functioning, depressed person like I've always been ever since I was a child. I was hella depressed, but you can ask Dominique in the comment box. Like, I, um, I was, it never seemed like it maybe. Like, you could not tell that I was extremely highly depressed and overwhelmed and wanted to kill myself and wanted to do this wanted to do that and you know maybe maybe she did see that and I just I don't know but I had I just nobody could tell that I was that kid that could slip my wrist any second because I was just so freaking depressed I was just depressed ever since I then so um you know it was, it was kind of crazy that that I didn't know that you know hey mental health you know you can function with it, but you need to be able to have a job. You need to be okay when you're dealing with your family and friends and loved ones. You need to be able to, you know, just, you need to be able to be okay. And if you're not okay in the head because you have mental illness and you know you have mental illness and you're not doing anything about it, um, not a good idea. Not a good idea. It does actually physically do things to your brain if you do not heal. So... Um, I say that, but I need to actually follow my own advice <laughs> because um, I, I do try to go to counseling. Um, I, I do not go to counseling right now, but what I am doing tools that do help me, and I will talk to you guys about that in a second, but um, counseling, you should pro that should definitely be one of the main things that you do if you have mental illness. Um, so... Getting into my mental illnesses, right? Okay, so let's see. From the list of the things here, what I have, what I've been diagnosed with, right? Okay, so clinical depression. 
I have that. Oh, uh, as children, I feel that uh, as children, I feel that we hid those things to fit in. Girl, yes, that is so so true. Um, so my friend Dominique said that as children, she feels that um, we hid those things to fit in, and I absolutely agree, especially because of the area we grew up in it was predominantly white and um, woodsy, like just com like nothing but woods, and. Um, I felt like I always had to find like I was just I just felt awkward and that's actually when I started hearing that I was not pretty like you know um, being in middle school and primary school I wasn't pretty you know I'm I'm boyish or I don't look good or you know all that kind of stuff um, and you know people are like oh why did you care about that at that age and it's like are you serious like yeah it's no, it's not okay that kids think about, you know, X, Y, and Z, but it, it happens. Like, you were a kid before, and you can relate, like, ha like thinking a boy is cute and, you know, wanting to be his little girlfriend and then but having to hear, oh, I can't date you because you're black. And it's like, oh, well, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, that just does so much to your psyche as a, as a black girl. It does. Um, and I have black girls as children right now and that hurts me um that they might have to deal with that you know in the future yeah we were the colored children yes we were i actually was called the n-word multiple times in that school by the way i want to just point that out <laughs> um, by teachers and kids and students um so clinical depression yes i have that except i um i was told it's severe depression severe depression right um, and that's a mental health disorder characterized by persistently depressed mood or loss of interest in activities, um, causing significant impairment in daily life. So yes, that is, um, possible causes include a combination of biological, psychological, and social sources of distress. Very, very true. Um, so what else do I have? Anxiety disorder. Told I have severe anxiety disorder. A mental health disorder characterized by feelings of worry, anxiety, or fear that are strong enough to interfere with one's daily activities. Examples of anxiety disorders include panic attacks, obsessive compulsive disorder, and, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. Um, okay, so bipolar disorder. This is something I'm actually considering of myself because of the mood swings and um, constant mood swings, right? Um, and things that I've gone through in the past um, <laughs> that, you know, that kind of give me an inkling that I may be bipolar because of the fact that I also have friends now and I was married to a person that had bipolar disorder. So now I kind of know and have an idea of what to look for and I'm kind of I'm kind of worried because I might might be bipolar. But, um, so it's a disorder um, associated with episodes of mood swings ranging from depressive lows to manic highs. The exact cause of bipolar disorder isn't known, but a combination of genetics, environment, and altered brain structure and chemistry may play a role. Okay. Um, okay, what else? Uh, oh, I, def I, don't have dis I don't have dementia. I don't have that. Um, I do have ADHD. Let's see what that is. A chronic condition including attention difficulty, hyperactivity, and impulsiveness. ADHD often begins in childhood and can persist into adulthood. It may contribute to low self-esteem, troubled relationships, and difficulty at school and work. What do you know? All right, and what else here? Um, schizophrenia, no. Oh, OCD. So I was told I have OCD. But I don't think I do. I don't think I do because I, if you see how my house looks. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, fun fact, OCD does not even have to all the way mean that you are a completely clean person. It could be things like you counting, um, you counting things a number of times before you can do something. In the past, yes, I was OCD and I had to fight it. I had to fight it. I don't think I'm OCD anymore um, to the point where it's it alters my daily life, 
but before I had to flip the switch a certain amount of times, I had to wash my hands a certain amount of times, I had to um, walk in only the squares of like, um, you know, like those square um, floors. I used to have to step in the squares. I couldn't step on a crack. I just little wonky things like that. Um, very OCD. Very OCD. If anything was out of shape, and even now, like I guess I am kind of OCD now that I think about it, guys. <laughs> because like if something is moved that I put it somewhere and I know I put it there, I freak out. I freak out because like no, I had it there. I know I had it there. <laughs> And I still kind of like count things. So I didn't necessarily 100% get rid of it, but I was able to manage it. And um, so excessive thoughts. Oh, okay. Yes, excessive thoughts. Um, I'm OCD, y'all. Obsessions that lead to repetitive behaviors, compulsions. Um, the reason, okay, obsessive compulsive disorder is characterized by unreasonable thoughts and fears that lead to compulsive behaviors. Shit. I don't think that one's changed for me either because when I think about something I think about it for hours it maybe days like it does not la it does not go away it's always there okay so um hmm learn something every day might still have OCD um I'm not autistic but I do have post-traumatic stress disorder okay PTSD and that is a disorder in which a person has difficulty recovering after experiencing or witnessing a terrifying event. Um, the condition may last months or years with triggers that can bring back memories of the trauma accompanied by intense emotional and physical reactions. So, um, yes, I definitely have that. Now, to go back, I'm going to explain to you how I obtained these mental illnesses because that's the good thing about me I feel like is that I was able to go back and work on my I was able to work on myself and go back and figure out okay where did I get this from why am I like this what is this right so depression I have to say I've had to be depressed I want to say since I don't know if you can say since birth but I know it's been since I could remember, like young, young, two, three, because from the rip, my parents split and uh, like at two or three. And, um, you know, it was just, it was just a really tough time. I was still old enough to kind of know what was going on. And then my mom met her boyfriend and, you know, that was weird for me, but I grew onto him and, you know, but then I had to deal with her having her life and wanting to date him but you know and you know I was just like okay but I'm your child and you know that's okay though because you know that's she had to work she also has a lot of mental illness that um she, because things that have happened to her that she just you know I just I chucked it off as she has things that um has happened to her and she is working and worked with the best that she had right so I'm not throwing shade at my mom at all, by the way. I do want to say that. But that is something that, that's how I felt, you know. And so, you know, that I went through that. And then also, the kids that I grew up with weren't the best kids. You know, they were into being fresh and doing this and doing that. And I was just like, okay. Um, I didn't really necessarily follow what they did, but I also did. Um, and you know, kids being kids, if they were taught something inappropriate, and um, you know, that was just like once I, ca I got caught like dry humping somebody I knew, and I got in trouble for that. And that after that, that was just like, oh my god, I'm done, this is crazy. So I stopped hanging out with kids like that, and started like getting literally into books and cooking. I was like five, no, I was like six, six years old, seven years old. I was just like, nah, I'm, I'm I. I see that this is wrong. I don't want to be like this. I'm going to get into other stuff. And that's what I did. I started cooking. I started doing my nails. I started doing my hair. I started singing, writing music, this, that, this, that. And it was so cool um, that I was able to experience myself, you know, and actually sit down and figure out that I was this type of person. I could do this stuff. And, um, you know, and then I, I, my mom, she went through 
heartbreak after heartbreak with men and I had to I was the youngest child out of her out of me and my sister so you know, my sister was way out of the house and I was here dealing with my mom's heartbreak and pain while going to school um, trying to stay happy for my friends and stay happy to, to fit in and you know and get the lead parts in this and the lead part in that um, cause I just wanted to be liked. I just wanted that type of validation from somewhere. And because my mom was so depressed her damn self and going through heartbreak her damn self, she couldn't give it to me. So I was looking for it in other places. And, um, you know, it just like, and then it's like I said, the school that me and Dominique went to was fun for the most part, but terribly racist, um, terribly racist. Like I said, I've been called ugly. And when I say called, I'm talking about kids and teachers calling me stupid, telling me to shut up, calling me ugly, calling me dumb, telling me I'll never be this, that, this. Um, I've had a teacher actually put her hands on me. She got a ruler and hit me on my hand um, like four, four or five times because she thought I stole her pencil grips that I know my mom bought me the day before. Um... You know, I got called the N-word multiple times. I've been, like, I went through a lot of, like, problems in middle school, primary school, high school, because I was black and I had nappy hair. And I, you know, it just, that's just how I grew up. I, you know, and, but that did a lot to me. And it made me almost want to be white, you know? It made me want to have that blonde hair. It made me want to, you know, get contacts. It made me want to straighten my hair all the time and, you know, dye it and this and that and this and that. And it was just like, it was terrible. I was whitewashed completely because I wanted to fit in that bad. And I was, it was like five of us black kids in that school. And I only, like two out, two out of the five of us were like really hardcore black because they grew up in a city area. Um, meanwhile, like country girls like me and Dom were just like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> um, but you know, it was just like we we were we were so innocent compared to everybody else. Really. <laughs> um, and then, but we really weren't at the same time. Like I like how that happened, how we were innocent but we weren't. Um, but yeah, it just it was super hard. Um, Growing up and having that, being told those things from your so-called peers and people who are supposed to protect you and teach you things. And uh, then, you know, I went through, you know, high school with the boys. I lost my virginity at 14. That did something to me, too, mentally, because I was like, shit, I lost my virginity. I can't get it back. Um, yes, yes, very poor compared to others. Yes, um, yes, I did not have... I did not have a lot of money, but my friends would have like these big ass houses and big pools and you know, um, one of my friends, he had like a go-kart in his backyard, like a go-kart like um, field, like you could just go in a go, like one of his go-karts and drive around and I was just like, oh my gosh, can I come over? <laughs> like all my friends would let me come over and their parents would let me come over because they knew I didn't really have it like that. So they would, like, that's one thing I was grateful for, having friends in school that had parents that were just like, yeah, come on over and experience this. Yes, because I was just like, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, so then I, yeah, high school, I went through heartbreak, I lost my virginity, and I was just like, oh man, I can't get that back. Um, and the guy who I lost it to wasn't even that great, you know, he was just like a jerk, a, like a straight up jerk, um, and, you know, cheating on me every five seconds, and, uh, it just was a bad experience, so that did something to me, and then, you know, my parent, then nobody knew in my family I was sexually active, so then I had, I got pregnant. And, um, so then it was really like, wait a minute, how, you're having sex, and it's like, yeah, sorry, forgot to tell you. Um, so I went through that, being pregnant in high school, and then I also had to deal with, once again, peers and teachers who are supposed to be supportive. Um, 
trying to get rid of me like I remember all the teachers and staff got together they had like a little meeting to try to get rid of me because they that school had never had anybody pregnant that early um in it so they were trying to get rid of me because they said I was a bad example to their the rest of their students literally came out of their mouth to 16 year old me um, that I'm a bad a bad influence and that I should consider highly in going to a pregnant mom school um, in, in Ocean City, I think it was, or Cape May, New Jersey. And I was just like, no, I'm not doing that. I want to graduate with my friends. I want to go to prom with my friends, okay? Um, and But they got they all got together. I remember kids used to actually shove them, like shove their friends into me or push me while I was pregnant. Um, you know, I just, I used to get so much heat in that school being pregnant, and but I still showed up every freaking day and got straight A's and I would just cry when I went home or I had friends that would curse. Okay, that was the other thing. I had friends that did not take that shit, right? They would curse somebody out for me in a second if they knew they were messing with me. And they were your good hearted, um, like high schoolers that if they saw some stuff like that too, they would like pull the person to the side or push them back and be like, yo, leave her alone or something like that. But um, yeah, I got the great honor in being pregnant in high school and being teased and pushed and bullied while I had another little human being inside of me. Um, <laughs> so that did something to me mentally. Um, and then, you know, I had my daughter and then me and my mom had drama where she would call child protective services on me all the time. And, um, we were just going through a really ugly time and, um, you know, I was going through domestic abuse and, and domestic violence with my first artist father. He's tried, he tried to kill me like three, four times. And when I say tried to kill me, yes, tried to kill me with a knife and gun. Um, and you know, I just, I was able to get through that and make it through that. And then I found another abuser and, um, ended up marrying that person and had children with that person. And that also really did a number on my brain as well and my psyche and, and mental health. And, um, you know, when I lost the baby, that was something else that added to that because I was four months along and I was good and ready to start going shopping and you know figuring out what the baby's gonna be and then I lost it so it was just like okay so that did something to me and that actually made me go back to my suicidal ways um where I you know one time tried to pop a bunch of pills and you know thank god that my children's father was right there um, and he was able to smack the bottle out of my hand. A bunch of pills started going everywhere, and I was just trying to grab them and, you know, get them. And um, he was able to push me away and put me into our room and lock me in there until he cleaned up the mess and got rid of it. But that was, that literally was where I was at mentally when I lost the baby because it was just like, there's something wrong with me. I did this. I'm a murderer, right? And, um, that's not true, but at that at that moment, I really 100% hated myself, hated him, hated everything, right? Um, and, yeah, uh, so then, so then, you know, I was also going through domestic violence with that person as well, though. Even though he was able to save my life, we still were going through this, and, um, you know, we ended up getting divorced, um, finally, and then that also does something to you because the way that it happened to was just terrible um but that does something to you too because I really thought that that was going to be uh, the rest of my life thing and that I was going to grow old with that person I've shared moments with that person that um you know I couldn't share with my family my own family so it was like I grew that much close to somebody else that wasn't my blood and so I it hurt when that had to happen but also felt great because I know my kids wasn't gonna have to deal with that anymore and I knew I wasn't gonna for sure have to deal with that anymore so um so and then the on and off the uh homelessness as well like this is actually the first Christmas hopefully that I'm able to like give my kids an actual good good christmas um to where they have a not only just not only a shelter like shelter 
but they also have a Christmas tree. They also have gifts. Like this is the first time, and, and I can't even tell you when. Like this is the first year I'll be able to give my kids that. So um, that and alone kills me. So that's that's the that added to my depression as well. So all those things kind of literally just added up to my depression. My mother suffers from depression, so and it's also hereditary um, in a way. So yeah, kind of from birth, I was, you know, like I said, I was born in a hospital where I, in Atlantic City Hospital that day, August 12th, I was the only baby born that was HIV negative. I didn't have any HIV or AIDS in my system, and I also didn't have any drugs um, cocaine, dope, heroin in my system either. The only baby that day born in the hospital. So um, that was that scary. But yeah, uh, doesn't mean that my mom didn't pass down something though because she definitely passed down some kind of mental illnesses to me, okay? <laughs> um, anyway, anxiety. I've had anxiety since I was a child. Um, but definitely got worse when, like I said, I lost the baby. Um, I just, and well, when I, when I lost custody of my kids for like, you know, less, like less than a few months, that was hard because my mom literally lied on me and, you know, got my kids removed and, um, that killed me. It killed me for, it felt like years, you know, and, but once I got the kids back and stuff like that, I was fine. But that caused a lot of anxiety, you know, and losing the baby caused a lot of anxiety to the point where I had to take medication for it because my heart would get, like, I would have heart palpitations and, um, you know, I would just have the whole nine yards feeling like a elephant on my chest, the, just everything, a bunch of stuff. Um, oh, oh my gosh, how could I forget? Um, yeah, the... The depression and anxiety goes hand in hand and totally, totally did start from a young age and like I said, from birth maybe, but definitely I forgot that like I have been, another thing that adds to my depression and anxiety is that I've been raped multiple times um, as a young adult. So, and then as a child, I dealt with sexual assault from a family member so you know for years so that also does something to you mentally because not only did it happen to me when I was a child but then I got the I got you know raped a few times um when I was an adult as well so that just um in itself is I think what mostly really broke me down out of anything in my life is because uh that when I, children are off limits I don't understand why people don't get that but um there are some sickos out there and I I experienced that for like I say years like five plus years and I finally got the courage to say something about it and when I did it stopped it was like oh I would have been done this if you know um but yeah and then I grew up and I just I had I was around I would put myself in situations that I thought I could trust that person and um, I've been proven wrong like about two, three times. I don't remember because I I had a really rough life and when you, when you go through a lot of stuff, you end up compartmentalizing it. And so I'm pretty sure maybe when I heal more and um, do counseling more, I'll be able to remember more of what happened to me in my past where I'll be able to be like, oh, okay, damn, I forgot that happened, and heal from it, you know, instead of just storing it somewhere back in this little area, in this compartment, yeah, not good, not good, because it stays there, stays there. Um, so all those things pretty much caused me to have anxiety, severe anxiety and severe depression. Oh, thank you, Marge. I love you. Thank you so much. I, I try. I try to be a strong person, but even strong people stop being strong for a period of time. And I've had those moments where I'm just like, I I give up. I'm done. I don't care no more. Um, but I obviously do care now. <laughs> like I said, bipolar disorder. I don't know where this came from. I wonder if my mom also has this. Um, but I have, a, I have severe mood swings. I'll be extremely fine, like happy, dancing, 
you know, having a good time. And then literally five minutes later, my fiance will find me crying, like bawling, crying. And he's like, what is wrong with you? What just happened? You were just dancing and singing and doing this. And it's like, I know, I don't know. I just thought of something. And then I started compulsively thinking about it, obsessing over it. And, um, and it messed me up that moment. I don't know. I'm sorry. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I, I have not been able to keep a steady relationship, um, with anybody. And I feel like that is probably because of also the bipolar disorder, but I don't know. Um, ADHD. I knew I had this, um, well, now that I know what it is and now that I have a child or children that have it, um, I know what to look for. And I remember when I was, like I said, in school, the teacher would be trying to give lessons. You know, the teachers would try to teach me the lessons. And I would just be sitting there like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so what are you doing tomorrow? Or what are you doing at lunchtime? Or what are you? And the teachers literally would call me out like, Sadea, sit down. Why are you talking while I'm talking? Why are you doing this while I'm trying to do this? Will you just sit down and be quiet? That's it. Go to the office. Like, I would just get sent to the office. I'd get sent to detention. I, like, just because I had so much to say. And I felt like I had so little time because when I went home, I had no life. Like, at all. I would just go home, eat, and play my dolls and watch TV. And um, play my PlayStation. But that's about it. Or, or Sims on my computer. But other than that, I had I really didn't have a life. Like I would go to my friend Dominique sometimes. I would go to my a uh, couple of my friends and spend the night. And like I would absolutely love when their parents let me come because it's like yes, I'm out of that fucking house. <laughs> um, but you know, it just it, yeah, it's just um, I just never paid attention. I never could hold a good relationship um, because of the mood swings and. I just never understood why and then when I you know got married to someone who has it I was like oh shit okay and then when I became close friends to a girl who has it I'm like oh shit okay um so definitely something I, I have to check out because you know ultimately the people around me end up suffering from my um mood swings so um ADHD I'm sorry yeah and then the ADHD, like I was saying, I'm sorry, I'm all, I'm, I'm getting jumbled up. Um, the ADHD, I knew I had this as a kid because I didn't pay attention to anybody or anything. Um, could not keep a relationship for that either because I was just always very, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And um, not really paying attention to that person or people, um, putting my all into that person and, and you know, talking to them and, and making, listening to them, right? And talking to them about what they talked to me about and um it just was so bad it's so bad like I could I still have it super bad I'll be sitting here doing so as you can see I was talking about something and then I got distracted um it's like squirrel <laughs> but um ADHD is crazy because it literally literally is able to be seen but also not able to be seen like some people know that I have ADHD just based off of me always moving around and some don't because I'm just like I'll be like this calm but in my head it's like <laughs> so um yeah very it would also affect my grades as well I would get F's and D's and C's and all that because I just could not focus I only started focusing really really well in school when I actually got into high school which is weird maybe and backwards but who knows um the, um, uh, the obsessive the OCD so like I said um the o so the ADHD I was born with the OCD I had to have been born with because I literally like I said would sit there and look at the light switch and have to switch you know switch it on seven times it was seven then I changed it to 11 and I was like no I don't like that number I, I keep picking odd numbers and I was like no I can't pick an even number because it's always it's always been an odd number like that's the things that's been that would roll in my mind or it would be oh wash your hands you got to get this part you got to get this part oh no now this part's dirty now you got to get this again oh no now I gotta do this and it's like it was so bad um look like I said the cracks in the floor I could not I could not step on them at all whatsoever 
Um, and it wasn't even because the whole step on a crack, break your mother's back thing. It's just like I would get infuriated if I stepped on a crack or if I stepped on, even if there was a crack within the square and I stepped on it, that infuriated me. Because it's like, why are you there? Why is a crack need to be there? Why can't it just be freaking straight and fine? <laughs> that's OCD right and then the thoughts the thoughts of like I said I fixate on a thought and it goes and goes and goes for almost weeks at a time hours days okay um, depends on what it is and how much it means to me too if it means a lot to me I will probably think about it all month that's just that's just OCD um, and then PTSD Obviously, like I said, a couple, few, a few things um, has happened to me to cause trauma in my brain, and PTSD would definitely, um, I definitely was diagnosed with that because of the sexual, the child sexual abuse, and then also being raped multiple times as an adult. Um, the not having parents there to validate my feelings or love me um, when I needed to be loved the going through the social problems from kids that I went to school with but also went um but also teachers calling me names and make treat making me feel like crap um it was me losing my baby it was my mother getting my children's take t children taken from me um the abuse of domestic abuse definitely the fact that i almost got killed by my children's father more than three times um caused ptsd i do not like guns at all whatsoever because of him um it actually altered me actually like deciding on getting a gun in the house or not um and it's crazy because yeah I'm, af I'm afraid of my children's lives you know if they get to the gun but I'm more so, like, for some reason, scared, like, something will happen to me. And that's only because I had a gun pulled to my head that made me have PTSD. Um, and I don't, yeah, there's a lot of things that I just, I don't trust people in general um, anymore. I just don't because of the raping and all that. Um, and... I just, yeah, I don't know. I've a, a lot of things have caused caused PTSD to me towards uh, on me or in me or whatever, and um, I never really got um, treatment for it. Which, like I said, these things like PTSD um, is a good example can actually eat holes in your brain. And what I mean by that is your brain. Trauma eats away at your brain in a way where, because our, our brains are like, um, a, like, almost like a sponge, but not a sponge. It's, it's like a, it's, it soaks up, it's like, it's squishy, right? <laughs> Obviously. And um, the way that it works is memory retention, right? Is, um, and the cells in our brain and the little, you know, passageways connect to each other. And our brain is actually like, you know also mostly fluid as well um although it has a, it has a form but what happens is like the trauma actually does things to these memory retentions which also if you have mental illness another thing is your memory is very very bad your memory is very bad and you don't remember a lot of things because of the the actual trauma eating away at the flesh in your brain and, and your memory in your brain and um there's actual pictures out there on the internet if you want to look at someone's brain that has like ptsd opposed to someone who is normal it's very different they look very different someone with ptsd had ptsd has holes um someone with you know trauma and all that kind of stuff so look it up you know um oops sorry but that's pretty much where I got my mental illnesses and, you know, what they, what I went through to cause, what that caused them, right? Um, okay, so then healthy and unhealthy ways that I dealt with these, right? So we'll get right into the unhealthy so that we could talk about the healthy ways. 
So the unhealthy ways that I dealt with this is number one, I compartmentalized it. Meaning I purposefully forgot about it. Not really forgetting about it, but storing it away. And it's, it's actually a, um, a coping mechanism, right? It's a coping mechanism that people use to not deal with or think about the trauma that they just endured or, or that they have just experienced. And so I would take what the trauma that had, was happening to me and I would store it all the way in the back of my head to the point where it wasn't like almost never happened, right? But the reason why that is dangerous is because you like, I would compartmentalize stuff and then I turned what, like 21 and was like, out of nowhere, I, like I had a smell that um, ran across my nose and it was like all at once all at once came the memory of what I went through and um, the trauma that I went through and all that stuff that I tried to forget and thought I forgot but I didn't I didn't it popped out of nowhere and it, it attacked me out of nowhere when I least expected it so that's why it's dangerous because like 10 years later you could be like oh snap like and you think like you've grown so much and oh you you did so much shadow work and you know you are you are getting you're getting this thing called life finally right and then out of nowhere something slaps you in the face to remind you nope you don't have life you don't got it together because you're still thinking about this and you didn't address this you didn't address this yet you just put it back there in the back of your head and that's um that started to once i freaking started remembering my past trauma oh man the ugly side of me started coming out more and more and more and more and more and more and instead of taking it and growing from it and learning from it and healing that inner child in me um i just would go ham i would curse everybody out i want to fight every five minutes um it's just crazy i just i had a moment where you know, now see another tool that I use that is not healthy. I put on this fuck you persona, persona, excuse my French, but I put that on to be like, go ahead and mess with me. I will mess you up. I'll beat you up. I'll pull your hair out. I'll stab you. I'll do this, that, and this, and that, right? But um, that was a mechanism to kind of make people think like, don't mess with her or, you know, don't don't try to make her sad or piss her off. Um, so that I could protect myself. And that actually ended up making people, like, not want to be around me. So, um, what else? So then I just, like, I just, um, what else? Other mechanisms that I did. Oh, smoking and drinking. Um, drugs. Not even just smoking and drinking. I went to pills. And, um, that was not, it didn't last long. Did not last long because... I just, I'm not naturally an addictive person, which is kind of funny considering that most of my family members have struggled with addiction, um, but I just, if I didn't like something or it, it, or if I felt like, you know what, this is dumb, I'm done, I would be able to do it. So I went to pills for, I want to say a year, and it did not go well with me, um, it would start giving me headaches and you know all that kind of stuff and so I quit cold turkey I was just like pills aren't for me I don't know how people do them um and I I've done with this kind of high I'm done and so I you know went to weed of course and then alcohol and um the alcohol was a problem for me because then I became kind of an alcoholic in that moment but like I said, I was able to step out of it and say I'm done being an alcoholic, so I stopped. Um, but yeah, I would drink, 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 drink. And I wasn't even old enough, but drink, 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 right? And um what I became of age, drink, 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 drink. And it was just like, oh my god, I'm over it. And then cigarettes, like I've tried substances, right, to feel better, numb my pain, get it done, go, you know, move about my day. I noticed that wasn't working either. So, um, so then I would get involved in other people's drama. 
distractions, right? Distractions um, from my crap, my drama. So I would get into everybody's fights and everybody's drama and everybody's this, that, that, and this. And I started to regret that too and stopped that as well And because um, that wasn't helping. I tried, um, I've tried, yeah, what else? Sex, sleeping around, that didn't help. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the bad things I've tried <laughs> to cope with my depression, anxiety, depression, I mean, I'm sorry, depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, <laughs> um, all that stuff. I tried to just numb it away, do something else besides that. So then I was like, no, I'm done with self-sabotaging. What else can I do? So I started going to counseling where the counselor was trying to tell me, um, well, I'm sorry, first I started medication and that didn't work for me. It actually made me suicidal again. Um, and then, so what else? Oh, and then I talked to a counselor who was like, no, 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 no medication, vitamins. You want vitamin B, you want vitamin B, B, um, to help with, you know, um, endorphins, the good ones, and, and, and um, good hormones that your brain needs to maintain your happiness. And I was just like, oh, snap, for real, vitamins? Okay, and he's like, yeah, and are you sleeping? Are you eating right? Are you, you know, are you drinking water? If you're not doing any of that kind of stuff, then shut up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He didn't tell me to shut up, but it's just like, girl, like, you're a human being. Think of yourself as a plant. If you don't have water shelter you know this that you're going to die and i'm like what do you mean by die for real die and he's like yeah die he's like because people get so sad that they take their life right and i'm like yeah he's like people get so sad where they let their body deteriorate right and i'm like yeah and he's like you see my point you are a plant if you don't put water and life and vitamins and, and, and good values and surround yourself with positivity and other good plants, you're going to die. Stop doing this to yourself. And I was just like, okay, I see where you're coming from now. So um, counseling is very awesome because you end up finding counselors, hopefully, that actually don't push medications and stuff like and narcotics and stuff like that to numb the the brain and all that kind of stuff. So definitely that. Then there's something, um, what else did I do? I started getting into sports again and working out, uh, which definitely helps. Working out in sports, um, just staying active, releases those good hormones, um, like, you know, the endorphins and stuff like that. Um, that help you feel good, you know? So exercising, eating healthier, cutting out the processed foods, that the stuff, the chemicals that they put in that stuff literally causes mental illnesses and causes mood swings because of the chemicals. And people don't know this kind of stuff. Box, you know, box stuff is not good for you. You wanna go as raw and organic as possible because it actually can affect your brain. Um, and how you go about life and I didn't know that either and but so I started eating more fruits and vegetables and less processed foods and I was waking up in the morning feeling like a human not like all uh, like out of it and gross you know and um started drinking a lot more water I started to oh do my hobbies a lot more like singing dancing um singing, dancing, arts, crafts, stuff like that. Um, I started doing more things with my kids because my kids, although they drive me up a wall, they also make me very happy. So, you know, playing games with them like Just Dance or, um, you know, Candyland or something like that um, is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, you know, doing stuff like that is, super super fun for me as well um what else what else oh okay um a good form of using sex towards feeling better was um when I met my now partner you know um 
you know, that can be an actual stress reliever and can actually help, you know, um, increase the good thing, the good hormones as well. So when you have a partner that a sexual partner that you love and or even just care about and they're sensitive and sweet towards you and treat you right, um, sex doesn't have to be a chore or like a oh my god like let me hurry up and do this so I can feel better you actually feel good before during and after and um, I'd have to say thank you to my babe because <laughs> uh, sometimes when I'm down I just give him a little nudge like <clears throat> it's that time <laughs> but uh yeah so that's something um what else guys oh blogging for me blogging and following my dreams following the things that I'm passionate about definitely helps me um, with my mental illnesses as well journaling 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 you have <laughs> you have to absolutely journal um, it sounds cliche and like oh god who has time for that but I have it on my phone it's called journey um, it's the journey app and I just, I talk into it and blah, 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 blah. My day was great or, you know, my day was horrible. I wanted to freaking shoot the person that almost crashed into my car, you know, just anything. I'm able to do that every day because I have it on my phone. I don't got to write anything anymore. It's not old school. It ain't the 19, it ain't 1990, you know, 2000s anymore. We can actually talk on our phone and, you know, have our notes and our diary in here. And so that's, um... That's what I do. I journal. I um, I just, it's pretty much self-love. Self-love. Another thing I do is practice self-love. If you do not love yourself, not a lot of people will love you. So, um, Lisa Frank notebook. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so, um, oh my gosh. Sorry, I got sidetracked. It. <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, just I'm sorry, guys. ADHD. Here we go. I something just Zach just went to put something in the room, and I I got distracted because I was like, ooh. But um, I try I try pretty much anything that I know won't harm me or others is not um something I know I can get addicted to and also um I don't know I just I, I just look up things I oh spirituality spirituality is a big thing that I just started getting into um charging crystals and actually meditating with my crystals um I don't have them in the room with me right now but I I meditate 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 with my crystals those two things together are bomb because i'm able to just okay um i'm able to um go outside and talk to the universe and the full moon um like i just i don't know i just kind of like do more things with nature as well i like to hug trees call me a tree hugger i don't care um i like to hug trees i like to play in the grass i like to just touch nature and and let nature know i'm appreciative of her and, or him or whatever then bit it um and um just reconnect to the universe i just like doing that it makes me feel good it makes me feel like i'm not just you know caring about caring about them um, I mean, caring about myself, right? So, um, another thing. Oh, sorry, guys. Hold on one second. Just let me know when you're almost here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, there's like, there's all types of good things that you guys can do to cope with these kind of mental illnesses right um so yeah uh what else what else oh also connecting to other people with the mental illnesses is very important because if you feel alone if you feel like you know I don't like I know there's no one else going through the same thing that I'm going through 
that's more than likely a lie because there are millions of people out there that go through similar things that you do and you won't know if you actually can until you communicate with people you know and other people in in that type of community so um yeah that's a good way uh so uh, another way like i said self-love um oh yeah self-love oh my gosh ah self-love so one thing you can start doing one thing i started doing was uh, giving myself a good big hug hugging myself i do this when i feel like i just need a hug i rub my back like so and I give myself kisses on the hand and I just love myself so much and I tell myself that I look in the mirror and I say girl you're so beautiful what would I do without you like oh my god um yeah I just I, I don't know I, I want to start dating myself way more like you know taking myself out I don't really like going places by myself anymore especially because of um things that's been happening to people that look like me um but um yes definitely should date yourself get buy yourself that bouquet of flowers get yourself that glass of wine uh, you know and dress in that lingerie and binge watch some tv with yourself um taking baths spiritual baths for me with a little bit of milk in it and flowers and you know honey and this and, this and that oils that help with my skin with in the candle with the lights dimmed and some music like i love doing that for myself i love that and um doing my nails you know um um one of my nails came off <laughs> um <laughs> doing my nails um my hair you know speaking love and putting pouring water into myself right is absolutely important and you guys i feel like you, you should definitely do that for yourself as well because if you don't practice self-love but you're and you're saying like no one loves me no one's giving me the love that i need that's because no one on this earth was put um was put on this earth to give you love no one was you have to go through your own life loving yourself and loving others because you choose to and then you know hopefully hopefully you'll get that love back but it's no one no one's um responsibility to love you even your parents like unfortunately yes they're supposed to take care of you but a lot of parents don't necessarily love their kids they just take care of them because they're there um and you know and and it, well, okay, it is the parents' responsibility to love them, but some parents don't. They just have kids to have kids. And um, in that case, you should not have kids. <laughs> if you you feel like you want to have love for something, but not necessarily a human being, have, get a cat, get a dog, okay? Um, because these are little humans that have their own personalities and say so's and you know i'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all and say my kids are perfect like my kids sometimes make me want to ship them all the way to africa somewhere or china somewhere because they smart ass mouths but i love them to death i could never do that <laughs> i could never do that <laughs> i love them they are my little mini me's but you know um they I, you know, I try to teach them too. You have to, even though I'm your mom and I love you, you also have to love yourself as well. Because, like I said, I grew up with the parents that loved me, but they didn't know how to show it. They didn't know how to um, provide that. And, you know, um, so teach yourself self love. Love yourself, okay? Yes, girl, big facts. Um, so I was going to go ahead and read some memes. I'm going to get off of here soon. Mm -mm -mm. So, one meme was... Oh, my gosh. Okay, so it says, um, I can say 2020 has been good to me. What about you? And it says, plot twist. 2020 has actually been the best year of your life. You faced challenge after challenge. 
You've adapted and you've overcome. 2020 has forced you to grow exponentially. Don't take that for granted. So yes, that is very true. Although 2020 sucked, sucked. It also taught us to stay strong and, you know, preserve our mental illness. I mean, our mental, I'm sorry, preserve our mental health and continue to try to do things that make us happy and to not take things for granted because just like that, things can change drastically, right? Um, And I I definitely have to say I have adapted to a lot of stuff um, and I have grown. I've grown so much and I'm so thankful. Um, I'm not thankful for this year, but I'm thankful (laughs) for this year showing me that I actually am who I believed um, that I was, you know? So another one says, a sorry, um, it's a picture of a girl. She's laying in her bed with her phone and a bunch of, you know, missed messages and stuff. And it says, hi, sorry, I haven't texted you back. I've been anxious and depressed. I haven't had time to catch my breath. You know how it gets, how life gets. I'm so drained, I can't even collect the energy for the most mini, minial of tasks, um, like texting you back or washing the one dish in the sink. The weather has been beautiful, right? Yesterday, I fought off a panic attack while I was driving. I had to pull over because my vision was blurred. I focused on how blue the sky was. I haven't washed my hair in three days. I just wanted to sleep. I just want to sleep all the time. But if I told you, you would want to uncover a reason behind all of this. And there is no tangible reason you would accept as valid. How are you? I hope well. Let's get dinner soon. So in that whole passage, right, there's like a mixture of, hey, how are you? I miss you. I'm, I'm glad that you texted me. I'm sorry that I haven't gotten back to you. But a lot of it in between was like, oh my God, I'm depressed. I'm going through this. I I had a panic attack. I had to lay down um, all day, all night. Like, I don't want to do nothing. I have no motivation. And I feel like a lot of us go through that. Like, um, me, like, I know personally, I go through moments where I haven't talked to my friends for, like, months. And then out of nowhere, I'm just like, hey, girl, hey. Like, (laughs) like, how are you? And they just like, what the hell? Um... But I tried to, I had to always try to explain to people, like, that's just my mental illness, and I hope you can understand and forgive me. Um, Doesn't necessarily mean I'm a bad friend. I just have, it just affects me mentally, physically, where I can't brush my teeth, do my hair, get out of bed, put clothes on, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, (laughs) so... Um, and it's crazy because I'll do the stuff that I need to for my kids, but as soon as I'm done that task, I go right back to my room, cry, lay down, whatever, and then they miss out on me, and it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but it did used to happen, and, um, I think it's important that we reach out to our friends a whole lot more, our friends and loved ones, because we don't never know what they're actually truly, um, going through, right? So, um... But yeah, that I thought those two memes were super cool. Um, but do you guys have any questions or in um, any concerns or anything like that for me? Now would be the time because we're actually about to wrap it up here. I gotta get the kids ready to go to their dad's house, um, and that's like within a couple minutes here actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, any any questions or any comments or anything that you guys would love to share? with me that would be awesome anybody anybody also um also stay tuned for my next live event i'm probably gonna do spanish class i'm not sure but i definitely definitely want to um put that in the event calendar because i will be doing more of these and um seeing where i go from there i will be still giving like free tickets to people um you know if they you know if i feel like they support me and love me enough (laughs) i will give you a free ticket because it's whatever i just love talking to you guys yes we will talk later oh my gosh (laughs) oh that girl miss rivera was crazy (laughs) my spanish name was angela 
Um, and that is weird because that's Angela, I think, in Espanol. And I'm like, my name is definitely Sadea. So she would change, she changed it to Sadia. And I'm like, okay, whatever. That's fine. Um, but definitely stay tuned. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please, please, please. I need that 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours. Um, I totally need that. Um, so please, please subscribe and, you know, support your girl. Share share with your friends and families, um, you know, and, and definitely Thalia. Thalia, Dominique, that was your name? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god that's so funny <laughs> but yes um i had to go but i love you all um i'm sure that if you still comment i will still get your questions so that i can still answer them in the next live video so don't be afraid to post um put your comments or questions in the in the box below and it has been a pleasure to have you all here with me you are all amazing I want to send you all love and light and thank you for spending your time here with me talking to me. Time is very precious and very valuable and I, I totally understand that. So I thank you all for being here and just letting me talk to you about, you know, pretty much me. <laughs> um, I love you all. Love and light. Stay tuned and definitely subscribe to Variety Views on YouTube, okay? Bye. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Love you.